Hello. Before I begin, I would like to thank you in advance for listening to this presentation. There is a reason that you are here seeking out this information about vaping and how it is affecting our youth. I hope that you will find it extremely informative and helpful. Most of the information that I will be presenting to you today is from the American Lung Association. You can find more information by going to the link talkaboutvaping.org. Smoking and the use of multiple tobacco products has been going on since the beginning of time. Fast forward to today, smoking cigarettes, chew, snuff, etc., has been replaced by vaping. It has taken us by storm. Vaping by school age students is at epidemic levels. And it is national and local. To be honest, it was not something that any of us in the schools saw coming. We were blindsided by how quickly it caught on, how quickly it became popular, and how much it has continued to grow. Statistically, one in four high school students vape, and one in 10 middle school students vape. There is a rising incidence of long-term lung injury from vaping being diagnosed right now by the youth population. So young people want to be in or accepted or cool. Sometimes they try vaping because out of curiosity. They try it once or twice and then they become quickly addicted to it. Then they get in touch with a provider and they are all set. It is relatively easy to hide. The devices are slim. They look like a fob, a flash drive, attached to the cord of their hoodie or perhaps an accessory on their book bag. Sometimes it just looks like a pen or a charging device. Vaping is very inconspicuous. It doesn't make their clothes smell badly or their breath. And the plume from vaping goes away very, very quickly. So there's nothing that actually stays around or follows them and the odor is absent. In fact, it's very, very pleasant. It's pleasant smelling and it's pleasant tasting. And that is the hook for our young population. They continue to vape because they become addicted so quickly. Just one pod of vaping fluid turns those receptors on in the brain and those children become addicted. COVID-19 has affected every person on this earth, every corner of the world. And that includes your very own children. Unfortunately, kids have more downtime. Their schedule has been painfully disrupted. There is a difficult routine for them to follow and they just don't have the normalcy that brings them security and happiness. So they, they're not connected as much with, uh, with peers, like in sports and other activities outside of school. So they become bored, they become sad and depressed, and sometimes they turn to vaping because they think that it will keep them connected and maybe even help with those feelings. Our children, unfortunately, are obtaining their vaping supplies and products from students that are older than them.
because now the age to purchase tobacco products in the state of Ohio is 21. So they are purchasing it from high school students who have graduated or perhaps siblings of their friends that are older. And these individuals are selling it to our young students at twice the cost of what it actually costs in the, on the market. So some kids, in addition to that, unfortunately, they have others in the household that vape. So it's kind of like an easy bridge for them to try it and become addicted themselves if there are vaping supplies around the house. Or perhaps they go to a friend's house whose parents vape. The same situation. The availability is just present and it's very tempting to them because they're kids. So they pick it up and try it. Sometimes our retail stores do not check the IDs of our young kids, proving that they are actually 21 years old and legally able to buy these products. So herein lies another problem. It's easy for them to obtain the products. We absolutely need so much education. It starts with you in your home. You see your child on a daily basis on a very personal level. You know your child better than anyone in this world. So by you understanding everything there is to know about, about vaping, the short and long-term effects of vaping on the body, the mind, then you are empowered to then pass that information along to your child. So it begins at home. And when should you start to talk to your kids about vaping? Well, most of the literature says the sooner the better. In fact, um, right around the third grade is a good time to start introducing vaping because it is extremely prevalent and children at this age start to notice others that are doing it and may become tempted. If you wait until middle school or high school, most likely there has already been exposure. But if you haven't started to talk to your children, please don't hesitate because any time is a good time to open up conversation. It's never too late. There must also be education in the schools and in the community. Education through social media forums and in the public arenas and political arenas. The more we talk about it on different levels, the more it gets into the mind of the young person. And hopefully, at some point, will be truly absorbed. Knowledge is definitely power in this situation. I do believe that most parents and caregivers in general do not know the extent to which vaping has infiltrated our younger population. It is definitely at an epidemic proportion. I also think that parents, some parents are in denial that their kids have tried vaping or are currently vaping. Parents and caregivers do know that their children are growing and learning and testing them. They also know that their kids will stumble and make mistakes and it is up to them as parents to be their soft place to fall and to help pick them back up so that they can get on the right track. And they do know, parents and caregivers do know that they would do just about anything to save their child from long and short-term effects of this deadly, deadly thing we call vaping. We must together form a team, a coalition, to the project of stopping this preventable addictive epidemic among our most vulnerable, 
our students, our children. This will take a concerted effort among parents and caregivers, healthcare providers and teachers, school nurses, guidance counselors, clergy and politicians. And I say politicians because we need to keep a monetary flow in our government in order to provide educational programs for our youth. Parents and caregivers, first and foremost, first and foremost, open conversation with your child. It is not easy. Have frequent open conversations, listening, talking, sharing information about vaping and addiction. But before you do that, I urge you to go on the internet, Google, how do I talk to my child about vaping? You will find extremely good information to share with your child and tips on how to talk to them, um, tips on how not to be intimidating, but rather come across loving and reassuring and giving them very informative information so that they can make a, an informed choice. Most advice out there does encourage you to be a good listener, provide factual information, avoid lecturing, and of course, convey a loving approach. It is important to let them know that you know about vaping that you know what is going on in vaping, that one in four kids at the high school vape, that one in 10 at the middle school are vaping. Explain the science behind vaping to them. Try to get to a logical place with them regarding the addictive brain and how easy it is to get hooked on vaping. Let them know that there's nicotine in the vaping fluid that is the addictive substance. 60% of students actually do not know that when we teach them. Talk about how the vaping market has literally exploded because of the attraction of flavors to the younger population. They want as many kids as possible to hook onto vaping because guess what? Once they're hooked, they have them for a very long time due to the addiction. Tell your kids that vaping leads to other addictive behaviors that may be harmful and even cost them their life. Be observant, persistent, repetitive, inquisitive, and nosy. Search their rooms, search the car they drive in or ride in, their coats, their pockets, their drawers, under their bed. Be a parent and not a friend when it comes to this issue to your child. Try to think like they think and try to stay one step ahead of them. Monitor closely how they are spending their time and their money. If they have a job, especially, this is important. Where is their money going? And if you are giving them money, how are they spending it exactly? Is it easy to start those tough conversations? No. Is it easy to have tough love with your kids as you probably already know if you're a parent? No. Is it easy to allow yourself permission to be totally nosy about their business with when they are trying to become young, independent adults? No. But you have to think, do you want them to know the dangers of vaping and addiction to any substance? Of course you do. And do you want them to experience a long, healthy life free of long-term term lung disease and addiction? You know you do, absolutely. The school provides them with lots of education. Teachers in the health classes, science classes, I do a lot of it myself as a school nurse. Guidance counselors, we have special pro programs specifically geared toward vaping. We get into their minds through social media applications. 
through public service announcements and we work with the local health department in developing important, important programs with the assistance of state funding regarding vaping and the dangers of vaping. We teach them the short and long-term effects. We teach them that when they vape, they will be short of breath in sports. They will get wrinkles earlier than they should. That they will, um, their, their ability to learn will be, will be directly impacted. And their ability for their brain to grow and absorb knowledge will be impacted. We teach them that vaping does lead to other addictions and that can be absolutely deadly and shorten their life expectancy. We try to teach them life skills and decision making through the power of knowledge. We try to monitor everywhere that they go in the building that they could actually be vaping. We have all eyes, we educate our teachers, we educate our staff members, because we have all eyes on these kids, trying to support them, trying to help them understand that the vaping addiction can be so powerful that they're trying to, to sneak it at school and that it is just not appropriate. It is not legal and it just is unacceptable. In conclusion, I just want to tell you that it has been my honor and my privilege to have had your attention in this extremely important program. Please do consider going online to talkaboutvaping.org or Google how to talk to your child about vaping. Do this today. It will definitely Fill your mind and your heart with knowledge that you will be very eager to share with your children. It is a very tough hill that we are climbing at this point. And again, we need to work together as a coalition to help wipe out this extremely difficult epidemic amongst our youth. Thank you.